Good morning, everybody. <sighs> Welcome to the rooster's nest. I am the rooster. And this is his morning crow. I just feel really, really worried about the planet, about humanity, and I know that we're all feeling that, and I know that this has been a deep, deep, deep pain inside of me since I was a child. I used to have panic attacks, I used to have problems sleeping. I think I've been depressed since I was five. Everything's just wrong. We're all babies in a broken world. And it's really, really hard to not want to give up. Or completely distract yourself. There's billionaires building rockets to leave the planet. Fucking assholes. There's people wanting to download their minds. <laughs> Idiots. She's dying. And she made us. And we're killing her. Why? Such fucking morons. I just don't understand it. For something made up, we made it up. Money. <sighs> Today was the very first morning that I was like, ah, I don't feel like going live. And uh, I'm glad that I committed to every day because otherwise I wouldn't have. Let's read from the Book of Awakening, shall we? All right. July 10th says, The Ring of Safety. Who sees all beings in his own self, and his own self in all beings loses all fear? Yeah, well, what about somebody who really cares about the planet? You know, even if we all, even if, ugh, okay, yeah, fine. Let me just finish reading this and then I'll get to what I was going to say. The ring of safety, who sees all beings in his own self and his own self and all being loses all fear. That was from the Issa Upanishad. Upanishad. I was sitting on a bench in the sun, waiting for Robert, when a yellow jacket landed about four feet to my left. I watched its striped in anterior pulse and protract, the sun making its black rings blacker and its yellow rings almost orange. It made me think of my mother and how if that yellow jacket were within yards of her, she would have rolled up the nearest magazine and with trepidation tried until she swat it. Swat it. Her fear of being stung made her kill many a small thing. She couldn't tolerate the uncertainty that something living might hurt her, and in her deep fear of being hurt, she walled herself in, swatting everything away. Almost 40 years later, I realized that we all suffer the uncertainty of being hurt by the life that surrounds us, and we all have a changing ring of safety beyond which we are likely to hurt other living things in the guise of self-defense. I sat on the bench and the yellow jacket flitted closer, but having almost died from cancer, feeling blessed to be here at all, I let the little insect come much closer than I used to. With a softer, more truthful eye, I could see it had little interest in me, and I am ashamed to admit just how many times I have harmed others because... 
Like my mother, I couldn't tolerate the unpredictable nature of their advance. How often we imagine things are dangerous when they are only doing what comes naturally. The yellow jacket came closer still, and when it was almost on my arm, there was time enough to gently shoo it on its way. It flirted with me for quite some time, coming close until I would shoo it on, buzzing at a distance and coming close again. This is so much like the dance we do with strangers and loved ones alike. How often we murder parts of ourselves by not letting things advance or come close. How often we let fear and the SWAT rule our emotional lives. How often we kill or chase away everything that moves. I think of Francis of Assisi, who held so still the birds landed on his branch-like arms, and we wonder why we are so lonely when we won't let anything full of life come near. If we could only see the bee or the bird or our enemy as a brief living center like ourselves, we could let them go on their way without pulling us into opposition. See, yeah. I will just speak a little for myself here and say that I love... <laughs> little insects. I love spiders. I love all those things that people think that would, that people would kill. You know, I treasure them. I see them as precious, just like our planet. And so I see how we are all one and I see how we are killing ourselves. I see how we are all one and we are killing ourselves, And that's why I'm afraid. So I don't have no fear. Close your eyes and meditate on someone who feels intrusive or annoying you. Okay, how about the fucking rich billionaires? Note what you feel, but assess, if you can, exactly what feels intrusive. Is this sense of intrusion coming from your fear, or is the person being truly intrusive? <laughs> Consider precisely what must be done to keep yourself safe. <sighs> what must be done to keep me safe? I don't know. <sighs> Adopt only that action, and if you can, engage the intrusion, the fear of it, and the fact of it no further. Note how far your fear would have if would have you keep others away. Note how much closer things can be if you let things do what they do outside your actual boundary of safety. <laughs> Note how far your fear would have you keep others away. Note how much closer things can be if you let things do what they do outside your actual boundary of safety. Okay. That last part I'm like struggling with. I think that that's probably the piece of wisdom I need. Note how much closer things can be if you let things do what they do outside your actual boundary of safety. I ugh, like try not to think about it so hard, maybe. Just like, you know, stay in your heart. The piece of you that like just loves everything, just live there and let that guide you. And hopefully everything's going to be okay. <sighs> All right. Well, um, Also, once I feel better, uh, I'll try to, you know, run for fucking president or something. So I used to be a early childhood educator, worked with teeny tiny little children. Uh, it was really lovely. They, it was hard because, you know, every child falls in love with me and then I have like 25 children needing, needing their hearts filled. <laughs> Um, which just you can't do. Um, and I was a forest preschool for a while, and I learned a lot of cool songs. Um, and this is one that I'm going to share because it's it's our earth. It's our mother earth. It's the way she speaks to us. It's every little creature that keeps me alive. And... Uh, <laughs> Even if I want to die, I stay alive for her. So this is how it goes. <clears throat> I am grateful to be lungs breathing, heart beating, joyous and free. Even though the hard times are all around me. 
I am grateful to be like a bird in the sky, like a dragonfly, even like the leaves all trembling and green, what lives in them lives in me, what lives in them lives in me. I am grateful to be lungs breathing, heart beating, joyous and free, even though the hard times are all around me. I am grateful to be because even if we fucking kill her and ourselves, she existed. She's beautiful. <laughs> And it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. So, on that note, remember, you can never fail if you never give up. It's okay to take breaks, though. <laughs> Everyone is someone. And if you ever feel down, all you have to do is say, cock-a-doodle-doo, motherfuckers. And I'll be with you on that one. <laughs>